Ebro in the morning. On Hot 97. Listen, Ebro in the morning, we delving deep today. My bro Tony Lewis is back, man. Yes, sir. Representing that DMV area. You got the book that you, I mean, obviously, uh, people do research on you. They can find out about yeah. how you grew up, your father, and uh, the world in which you became a man. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and the name of the book you recently it's got. Slug, A Boy's Life in the Age of Mass Incarceration. Yeah. And I mean, honestly, I'm biased, right? But I suppose it's the best book out. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and I say that Well, because it's written firsthand. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and it's a mixture of personal and professional experiences as it relates to mass incarceration. And Not in some ways, um, you have been blessed yeah. because of how you came up. So you have a a way of uh, seeing things that, you know, many people who didn't come up with a father who did the things your father did or, and, and has been convicted of and the world that you came up with, you've been able to avoid. Yeah, In man. some ways, it's a blessing for you to be able to have foresight. I've been covered. You know what I'm saying? I've been blessed for real. I mean, my father going into my, all my homies, man, being locked up or, or dead or, you know, on it. You know what I'm saying? When I say on it, like, a, you know, substance abuse or whatever. Mm. Like, my homies, man, I'm out around my way. I still live where I grew up at. They walk around talking to themselves, some of them. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like I feel like, you know, what we came up in, nobody escaped it except me. And so that's why I go so hard in the work. And that's why I feel like my perspective, though, is so important. Like, well, and escape, I mean, you still are in it. Yeah, You're yeah. still working without question. Like escape, meaning it didn't inflict meaning, um, you the same way absolutely. that it inflicted others. Absolutely. But still... You don't have the privilege of someone who completely can't. And see, that's a thing that people don't necessarily talk about, in my opinion, yeah. right? The the scarring, right, that takes place mm -hmm. that doesn't enable you to walk away completely from a circumstance because you know the damage that it did to your family, your loved ones, and a place that raised you, right? When you wounded, like you emotionally wounded, you have a responsibility to those folks, right? That's my base. No matter where I go, what I do, it's I'm and that's accountable gonna be with to them. You. And what bothers me sometimes is that a lot of the people that's at the forefront of, I think, speaking for communities like the one I come from, they're never in conversations with us or they don't come from that and so the the message gets diluted specifically around mass incarceration because we talk about this in 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 such a just about the inmates right mm. and in and, and not the collateral damage that is caused to the children and the families and that's what slug was about and that's what my work is about to say hey look and if you want to correct like you want to save the lives of children right uh how can you do that and i hear a lot about let's help the kids how can you help the kids without helping adults but you know you do know and the reason i'm on i'm a, i'm a, I'm a kind of i stopped on this is because um i find myself more recently having this conversation about the luxury mm -hmm. the privilege of people who have come from circumstances unlike yours yeah. right um that don't feel obligated They'll talk about it, mm -hmm. and they'll double tap. They maybe show up to a protest. Sure, you know what I'm saying, but they're not. It's the woke people. Yeah, whoever, I'm I, you know, I'm like, I mean, I hear that a lot, though. Whatever I'm, you want to call okay. them, and, and in cool. their way, they're doing work that they're capable of doing, but they have the luxury of putting it down. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, I have, you know, I lost my father. I have all all the men in my family, and people who are still dealing with the environment that we were born in, whether they're dealing with the uh, nutritional issues, the, you know, the social issues, the lack of jobs, you know, their father, you know, my cousins were fathers who went to jail, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah. I don't necessarily have that luxury because I still got to deal with my loved ones the same way you still got to deal with your loved ones. But there are people who don't have to deal with that. They, and yeah. even if they came from the hood and maybe their family, their complete family could yeah. just be like, nah, none of our family went to jail. We up out, boom. Yeah. And the reason I point that out is because in America, we celebrate that. Right, so while many of us and yourself, more so than myself, are on the front lines dealing with this because we feel a connection, the obligation, continue to have this conversation, continue to do the work, continue to help people feel like somebody gives a fuck. Right, right. That's right. Our society, and this isn't just a black thing or a Spanish thing; it's a an American concept, mm -hmm. is to overcome your circumstances and leave behind. Yeah for the sake of more money and a better life. Like, that was this whole thing of America like was. Yeah. Is yeah. to leave behind where you came from, mm -hmm. right? Come here, get financial wealth, yep. things, stuff. Not necessarily cultural wealth or spiritual wealth. Yeah. 
Stuff. But stuff, right? And proceed on and leave behind what you... That's like the, the fabric of who we are. So in some ways, our frustration and disappointment with people who look like us or come from where we come from, it's embedded in the fabric. It's yeah. cooked into the bread. You feel what I'm and saying? No doubt, no doubt. It's a part of being... Americana, right? Yeah. You know what I'm really. saying? So, And that's why I wanted to deal with that for a second because... Hmm. While the scarring is there for somebody like yourself, you write the book, that's your father who's in prison right now, and your family members and kids you came up with in school, you see them in the, around the way talking to themselves, inflicted by that crack epidemic, or even more recently, inflicted by this opioid, opioid situation that's going on with synthetic even younger kids and too. pills, synthetic drugs, right. whatever, all of alcoholism, yeah. you know what I mean, post-traumatic slave depression, disorder, yeah, depression, all of that, right? All of it, yep. Um, you know, you can't just walk away. Yeah. So... I've seen you get frustrated with not seeing more artists step up. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But remember, and rappers, you know, and in and, and some ways, Hove is just getting back to it right yeah, now. Yeah, and I'm happy about that, too. I'm happy. I'm happy to see that, like him to lead the charge, because I hope, I think people can follow suit. But I also recognize a lot of these, especially the younger dudes, they coming up in the, in the, in the, in the, in the same environments, void of men, void of leaders. Mm -hmm. So I don't expect that they know that. But I expect that the guys that say they from the street, that talk a lot of the street talk, specifically when it come down to mass incarceration and sentencing reform and speaking out on those issues, because if you come from that, then you, your friends and your family members have been impacted by it as well. And that's why I always shout out Pusha, man. Pusha T. Pusha doing that He's work. He's been doing the work. I'm talking about really doing it and trying to bring, advocate for it and bring it to a new a, a new height and really make it a thing that's important. Um, but a lot of those other guys need to follow Push. And I, I love Hove with the Khalif Browder piece. I love the, the op-ed he wrote in the New York Times, both of them that he did, and the latest one about bail. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in D.C., we don't have bail already. That We, we haven't had bail in a long time. What do you mean you don't we have We don't bail. have bail. There's no bail. There's no bail system in the in District of Columbia. It's up to the judge. If you get let out on a personal recognizance or you get reprimanded back to the, the jail until you stay in trial. And so... A so there's no system in in Washington, D.C. If you go to jail right. or you are, uh, you know... Um, uh, 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 you charged with something. Charged with something. Yeah. There's no system at which you can now... Pay your way out. No. It's no bail. It's been like that for years. It's been like that for and, a, and for, the reason is the reason, that's just what the voters vote. Yeah, for? that's just what they do. That's just what we do. Um, and there's no vote for that. There's no person that leads no, that charge. There's no. no the courts. The courts decided. Um, I remember like when my father went to jail 28 years ago. The fact that they got a no, it was no bond, right? That was like that was like, you know, earth shattering. People was like, what? No bond. So shortly after that. D.C. kind of just, then I was, they, they went to a system of, it's, it's no bond in D.C. The judge, either the prosecution will say, we we move to have this person, you know, reprimanded until trial uh, or, or or sent back to the jail until trial, or we recommend personal recognizance, or the judge can just say, okay, you can go home and you you return on, you know, July 30th. If they 30th. believe you're not a flight I, risk. A flight or risk or anything like that, or if you don't got no prize or, you know, repeat, you're a repeat offender or whatever. And one of the things in this conversation of bail versus no bail, I think people automatically assume that no bail is the best I mean, is the best option because a lot of poor people can't pay their way out. And the Khalid Brother situation was a was a, a great example of that, right? This kid, you know what I mean, charged with taking a book bag, had to sit in jail three years, you know what I mean? He couldn't pay a, 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 a minimal bail. But the, at the same time, the no bail system is once that judge says you got to go back to jail, nobody can do anything about it. So it's like, damn, if you do, damn, if you don't. Yeah. And my 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 message has been we got to find a better way to keep kids out from in those courtrooms, period. Well, yeah, fact. You know I mean, saying? that's the like, universal But we got to talk about what that looks like, though, and how we need to, how that happens. Well, I think. You know what I'm saying? Because, Ebro, listen, this is what I'm saying, bro. We hear a lot about sentencing reform or criminal justice reform. We hear, you know, in policy. But what I'm talking about was missing is that we got to we have to think about on a local and national level about systems right that we can create and maintain that will heighten the chance that these young men and women don't find themselves in these courtrooms right and 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 and, and I think the anchor in that is going to be the men and with the adults in the community, particularly those previously incarcerated, getting them engaged. We got to have the same energy that we have around uh, uh, reform and policy talk that it, on that end, we, it's missing. Well, I do believe um, a lot of our problem as a community, right, mm -hmm. is the fact that the common unity 
yeah. is a, is an issue, right? Those and gaps, that's right. So let's go there. That's why I like and there's, a, and there's a lot of there's a lot of to unpack there. So that's the first issue, yeah. right? Common unity. Yeah. In the based around that concept, I think the second piece of it is personal responsibility, mm -hmm. right? We spend a lot of time as a community putting energy on outwardly towards the people who have done us harm, yeah. which is basically the whole American social system yeah. that we live under. Well, which and I feel is easier, by the way. It's definitely easier to be like, yo, they fucking us over, they doing yeah. X, Y, Z. Not that it's not true. Sure. It's absolutely true. Without doubt. However, if we're going to stay here yeah. and live here, right. then we're going to have to focus on what we can control. Right? That's a real conversation. Yeah. Then on t and, and in that is all layers of things. That's, uh, uh, obviously, I'm going to go into it. <laughs> Food deserts and eating the proper nutrition and, yeah. you know what I mean, and family and a family unit and, you know, uh, making sure that our kids understand personal responsibility and what is expected of them. Sure. Because a lot of times we, as a community, are comparing ourselves to other communities that don't have our issues. Yeah, or our struggles. Or yeah. our struggles, mm -hmm. right? So we're saying, well, it's not fair. This, that. No, it's not fair. Yeah. It's not fair. It's not right. We got fucked over. Now what we gonna what do? We gonna we gonna wait for people to come feel sorry for us yep. and, and 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 you know come and uplift us and help us, or are we gonna come together and be like, look, fam, they coming to kill us. Yeah. They don't give a fuck. They don't need us no more. Yeah. This right? How we defend either either they more. getting either they getting us for cheap labor. Yeah. Putting us in cages, or they killing us with no sort of recourse. They not going to jail. No. So what you gonna do? You gonna continue to let motherfuckers come kill you, yeah. right? And take advantage of your children. Meanwhile, you sitting up watching TV and eating the wrong food and feeling sorry for yourself, or you gonna do something? That's right. You see what I'm saying? Like what you gonna do? Yeah, man. Because we can't defend ourselves against anything if we broken. And a lot of times we don't want to address those issues, right? We don't want to combine, we don't come together. And the poor, poor blacks and, and, and middle class and upper class backs, it's not like we we got the same struggle or or the same, on some levels we do, but we're divided. And we gotta mend that. We gotta bridge those gaps. And that's what I, that's what basically what I was getting at. Like that's that's my point. We have to come together and strategize. How do we build stronger black families, right? How do we build stronger black communities? But we can't have a, a strong black community if we don't have strong black families. And, and if we don't have strong black men, then we, we can't have strong black families. So all that stuff play a part in. We start talking about people that are formerly incarcerated. These are, these are parents. These are leaders in our community. And when they're marginalized, when they can't get jobs, when they got to resort to doing whatever they do, and when we're not disciplined enough to say no to these certain drugs, and we're not, when the, the, the church just come on Sunday, the church don't come out into the community. All of these things that's going on that, that has us in this space, until we address these things, and only until then will we really be able to address all that other stuff. You know what I mean? And, and, and I hope that people understand that you posting all you woke and you doing this and you doing that, but we never see you in the community. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We never see people in the community. And I got a, I got a big problem with that, not just locally, but nationally. Like, and when, when, when we having these conversations about the, the issues impacting the poor, you don't have people, you don't have the poor coming to talk for themselves. And I feel like that's another thing. But I, on one end, I guess I get it because I know we just explain what happens in communities like the one we come from. A lot of people don't make it to be able to be the voice, but people are out there. And I feel like they should be given a platform and, and, and an opportunity to really give the perspective. Like, you can't just look at the stats. I'm going to tell you what those stats smell like. I'm going to tell you what they feel like. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's important because in, in, if we don't do that, you're only getting half of the story um, and half of the reality. And, and I don't mean to say that. Like, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's so much hope. Like, I, my, my little man, Kenny... Um, shorty father was locked up. He go to FIU on a master's joint. He up here at Columbia. Mm -hmm. You know, so is the, uh, your young intern. Like, I see these young, amazing black children doing, you know, incredible things. And, and so we, we have hope. But it's about, you know what I mean, changing the paradigm to a point where that kid is the most, he's the coolest or she's the coolest person in the well, crew. Well, I think, you know too, I, mean? I think, too, um, while I don't think we've obviously... The shift hasn't been uh, happening over an extended period of time as of yet mm -hmm. um, for us to measure its impact. But right now, we are sitting at a time, a very important time, where it is cool to be informed. Yeah. So while we can criticize people who claim they woke and all they're doing is sharing on social media and they're not really out in the community, 
There's a flip side to that coin, which is it has become cool, become cool to be informed and to appear informed, which is... But what is that without, without implementation? No, I'm That's not saying point. it's anything. Oh, okay. I'm not saying it's good. Or, saying. No, I'm saying it's a step in the right, right direction. Right. It's and not a complete that. thought. So I, I always pause a little bit where I'm like, well, shit, I've been on this radio 27 years, and I remember when motherfuckers used to just make fun of me because I would just be like, oh, he brought on that shit again. Yeah. You always, or what you... You know, <laughs> I remember clearly yeah, you, you know, when Hove said, when Hove said, Oh, what you trying to kick knowledge? Yeah. Getting that Nas. Yeah. And niggas was like, yeah, this nigga think he's smart. Yeah, that was I, was more, I was more of a Nas fan than I was a Ho fan. I like Ho, yeah. but from where I come from, what Nas was giving me, I needed more than what Ho was giving me. You see what I'm saying? Not on skill. No, I feel you. On content. And, I was the exact and me and Jay have had this conversation. <laughs> yeah. Not, and I, right? But now look where Ho yeah. is at. Yeah. So... He's gotten there, but I remember when it was cool to get at somebody and throw that. Oh, you try. Oh, you think. Yeah. Oh, you trying to kick not. Oh, you think you smart. Remember yeah, that? I do. Nigga, go to come home from college and or oh, jail. Oh, or, or jail. You you know even. Oh, you Muslim jail, now. You Muslim. Oh, you Muslim oh, you now. You read a few books. You know. What I'm oh, you read a few books <laughs> now. You think you better than somebody, right? Yeah. But now we are living in a time. Yeah, that's a cool thing. Where it's oh, it's not only okay but cool. Yeah, no doubt. To read, to share. Kendrick Lamar has the most important album right now and is known for that. Yeah. He said, y'all let, you... let the conscious do it. Like, you, you let me make a conscious album, make the best album, but it's a conscious album. So I think. J. Cole. J. Cole. Yeah. Self aware, yeah. socially aware, active. So I'm not saying we're there. There's so much work to be done, generations no, no. of work to be done, no, no. but at least we can commemorate a moment Very true. and isolate a time where because of what has happened to us, because of how far we've come as hip-hop, mm -hmm. because of social media, because, unfortunately or fortunately, the silver lining of Trump being a president, yeah, all of those things. because of the Attorney General Jeff Sessions and that whole regime trying to push drug laws backwards. They tr no, take that back, though. You were not trying. Not trying. Doing it. Doing it. Do and dr drug laws and for the rest of the world, you don't... Gun, gun, gun charges, too. Gun charges, okay? too. Illegal guns. So you're going to encourage their base to get more guns, but they're going to give us... A, and I'm saying I'm mad at that about going to jail for having an illegal gun, but they're going to prosecute that to the highest of heights. And... The, the, you know, so, and you got to pause on that. You got to pause on that because if it's easy to cl criminalize young black and brown men, it makes it harder for them to protect their families. So then having a gun in a neighborhood where there's already a lot of issues mm -hmm. becomes convicted at the highest level. You're now adding another trap door to the, a well, situation that already has several layers of traps. And not and like you said, not that there should be illegal guns, but, but just so everybody of, that's can... That's right, so they understand that. And then you got to think in our communities where we feel like we have to protect ourselves based on what may be going on out front. And we have uh, our, our mothers, wives, children to protect. Um, and I, 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 have a, I have a conviction already, so I can't just go get a legal gun, nope. but I want, I'm going to defend my family. And see, you see the type of positions we get in, and then you think about, you know, crimmigration, right? So this whole push for uh, to arrest illegal immigrants, really, I, I feel like mass incarceration for this administration is really going to be their stimulus package. It's their jobs package. Absolutely. Yeah, without question. Absolutely. The two things combined. The only thing that you can make money to increase the GDP on yeah. for the, what to make this administration successful, um, which is why the previous administration with Obama was pushing for more technology new energy, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And that would have been the thing that we were able to duplicate around the world to share that and make money off of the businesses providing that, which would have improved jobs in the country as well as made corporations that are operating out of America that much more lucrative and we would have yep. been able to get those tax dollars. Take this administration little, wants to go and, and, and double down on old types of jobs, coal, fracking, oil, et cetera, et cetera, and the cheap labor that they can get higher margins on from the, the people in prison. Plus the prisons themselves. Because that's the other yeah. part. Like, I write about it in Slug, where I've seen coal and prison, I mean, coal and steel country become prison country, yep. which I'm describing Appalachia, right? And, you know, that from Pennsylvania all the way down to Kentucky through the Appalachian Mountains, you got endless 
federal prisons, but you also have state and private prisons. And what happens is these prisons in these very remote rural communities, they create it. It's, a, it's an industry. It's an economy. Mm -hmm. So once upon a time I grew up, granddad worked at the mill, dad worked at the mill, the son grew up and worked at the mill. Now it's going to be that for the prison. You got to build the prison. You got to staff the prison. And then people like me, when I come to visit that prison, I'm going to have to stop and eat at your little diner. If I'm spending the night, I'm going to have to stay at your little hotel. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? If my daughter has on a dress and she can't get in because it doesn't have sleeves and it's July, then I got to go to your little store and buy a $4 t-shirt for like $15 for a three-year-old. These are real-time things and families are going through it. I got to stop at your little gas station and get gas. So these prisons really literally create an economy in these small towns. And we got to think about this. And they get federal and state funding. I, absolutely. They are federal and state facilities. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And the other thing about Unless that, they're private, which, well, private, of course, then they get taxed and the state still get the money. The state get the money. And, the, and, and, and for that, like I just left one of these places visiting them, talking to D.C. inmates down in North Carolina, a, a, a private prison. When you think about what's in that town or in a 20-mile radius of that prison, those people are going to go and vote in favor of a more Donald prisons. Trump. It's no question. It's without a doubt because that's there's how they nothing get money. There. That's there's how they get there. money. Absolutely. And putting black and brown people in, and poor people in cages sure. that don't look like them yeah. is not a problem. It's not. It's not. And I'm going to tell you something, though. It's, it's some black people in some of those places that they with it, too. Because, again, it's about self-preservation for them. Well, that's part, but that's what we started the conversation on, which is the fabric of America. Mm -hmm which is not really about a common unity. No, unity no. It's not. It's, it's not. about my bank account, my pocket, sure. and me doing better by any means necessary than my neighbor. Yep. Yep. And I, and I, and I stand on that. That's what, that's, what, that's what makes me feel good about me. That's what, we, that's what we're taught. I'm doing, if I have somebody I can look down on, that's why, again, we had this conversation about poor white people and how they look at, you know, they can be the most racist people sometimes, and the things that they say about black people, like, we're not that different, it's, but they can look at us. The, America has crafted this narrative and this vision that they are above us, and, and, and that happens even within our community. But why do you time. think it is that when you look at the intellectual, the black intellectual throughout history... Yeah from the W.E.B. Du Bois and the James Baldwins and the Marcus Garveys and others sure. opted to go buy land and buy homes and other pa places later on in their lives yeah, they left. because the fabric of where we are is not based on um, uplifting and preserving people with black or brown complexion. Yeah. It's not based, I mean, at, at its root. At its root, it's, it's an extension of, right, a European mindset, and predominantly, right, uh, a white Anglo-Saxon sure. Protestant mindset. It's an extension of that, yeah. right? Um, and that's just what it is. And when you look, and we talk, I talk about this all the time, you know, when you look at the globe, everything on the globe, most of the countries above the uh, the equator who are lighter complexion is where most of the wealth is on Earth. Period. Yeah. Now, yeah. most of the natural wealth in the soil is, is below the equator. Mm -hmm. And those are black, usually black and brown folks yeah. that are being taken advantage of or being systematically designed to be poor. Sure. And so, and that's a big thing. Why do you think the Donald Trumps and the Brexit and what they just went through in France, even though, you know, they put a guy in that is more open-minded. Russia, in that whole alignment with Trump. Why do you think that's such a storyline? Yeah. That's a storyline because that is people of white complexion trying to ensure that for generations to come, the oppression of black and brown continues. continues. And it's people think power. I'm crazy when I talk about nah, it. You're not crazy. But that's... If you t remove bank accounts and financial wealth from the concept, part of the issue that is natural to humans is the fear of the black man based on natural elements of dominant yeah, genes genetics, yeah. and genetics. Yep. And not that it's like, oh, one is better than the other. It is simply that the, the presence of blonde hair and blue eyes and the presence of a black man in one generation. Yeah. And that's what yeah. the fight has always been sure. for centuries. Sure. But back to the economic piece, as long as they can dominate that, then, you know, they can keep these things in play, right? They. Um, 
And, and that's why we have to have, when we start talking about, you know, our community and how we move forward, it, it, again, even from if it's around reentry or criminal justice reform or around any issue in our community, there's, we have to, we cannot omit the economic piece. You know, until, if people can't have pathways to become, you know, to, to become stable, you know, the, these forces but are- why would they want you to become yeah, stable? But see, they don't want, they don't. But that's but, why you have to- But within our control, though, I'm saying we can't, we don't control everything. Yeah. We don't control any of that. But I mean, I'm talking about on, on very small levels. This is the only way we can build it, though. We have to start to, to strategize on how do we create systems where we can at least touch some of that. You know, because without that, that's you don't have power. That's what I'm talking about. If we even even down to uh, outreach and all these things, if you don't fund these movements, no, a movement can't move without finances, without money. You have to fund it. So, like the, um, I mean, and, and this is something that not bothers me, but like um, Lady Agnes Gunn, right? Uh, she she sold her uh, Lichtenstein uh, painting for like 165 million and created a hundred million dollar criminal justice reform fund. Hundred million dollars. This white woman, right? I want to see some, and so we start talking about our athletes or entertainers, people with money, whatever, whoever it may be. We got to start creating not just funds to send people to college. We got to create, we got to give money to organizations that's working literally in these communities mm -hmm. because it's, it's steps. And if you want that kid to even make it to be eligible for that, uh, that scholarship, you got to get him there or get her there. That's going to talk, and, and they say on the ground, grassroots. No, we need to empower these people that are there in these communities every day, literally stopping our young people from dying, stopping our young people from firing these pistols. These are the things that are important because if we don't do that, this up top stuff, they'll never reach it. And that's what I mean about if we don't provide jobs, we don't provide uh, entrepreneurial opportunities and training. You got to. You, you have, have to. to. That's getting missed. We, we, well, and also those programs with an administration, when you allow an administration uh -huh, uh -huh, in no play way. like this one, yeah. Right? When people think voting doesn't matter. Sure. Right? Sure. When people want to say, look, I didn't like Hillary Clinton. Yeah. I just knew that programs in the hood wasn't going to get cut. Yeah. Less of the two? Is that how you look? <laughs> Less That's of the one. two. I mean, y'all no. seeing? Y'all about to see? You seeing? Listen, man. So, and, and, and so at talk, a certain... Talk a bit more about, about that, though. Hold up. Right there, with the, with the, with this administration, in terms of what they're going to cut, this even the budget that he proposed, people have to understand. Snap, right for the hood, food stamps, right. You talking about? We talking about the healthcare piece. We talking about? And listen, if we in the government, in in D.C. where I'm from, anybody who made it to the middle class out the hood, they had a good government job. That's what we say in D.C. A yeah. good government job. That's you, a wrap. If, that's a wrap. So that means you is no upward mobility. And a lot of a lot of other places in this country, black people work in the government in some form or fashion. They're yeah. public service. So if you cut that middle, if you take that out of the equation, you ain't you ain't getting no look. Listen, you're man. not getting the Listen. look. You're not getting the 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 good job with the good benefits. It helps you put a little bit of aside just so you could give your kids a little extra opportunity for the next generation, yes. right? And we so when you miss that with Ben Cardi cutting and that. HUD and all these things, it's like I told people mad times. Yeah. I say y'all can fuck around if you want to and let dude become president. I'm a bi. Yeah. Matter of fact, I'm telling you, he man. gonna help my pockets based on the amount of money I'm making. Right. I vote against my pocket because I want to see y'all get a look. Yep. But if y'all fuck around if you want to, you are gonna see. So all all you do speaking for the hood, you some of you I'm from the street and all that. I mean, you gotta start speaking for the street. You gotta start talking about the realities of what's going on in the and street. And you gotta stop thinking that. America gives a fuck about yeah, you and stop don't. this whole, like for me, <laughs> for me, I don't expect nobody to give a fuck about me that works in the government. The only reason they give a fuck about me is because I pay taxes and I have a microphone in my face. They don't give a fuck about me, mm. right? The whole like, oh, my teacher don't care and this one don't care. No, they don't. Yeah. They don't. They're not here for that. Except, right? <laughs> Deal with that reality and stop lying to your kids. Shit, it, shit is unfair. If you come from the hood, Teenage mischief will get you put in jail. Yeah. If you're in the suburbs and you got money, teenage mischief, you good. Just say what it is and stop lying. Man, listen, I got this, this campaign. Like, it's right here on my joint. Don't get taken, right? That's my whole new anti-incarceration, you know, campaign, right? For young people to say, listen, man, your decisions play a role in this. You already know what it is. Look, this is what it is. This is how it's set up. They waiting on you. You know what I mean? 
period. They got, they got I gotta rooms give you, for I'm giving you, you that early. Young as I be in the third grade, shorty, listen. Li you're not listening to your teacher right now and this behavior that you don't listen, understand something, bro. If you you're not focusing on your studies, you're not doing what you're supposed to do, you going to jail. And I'm telling him that God, he know that I don't want him to do that. But if you don't change things, if you follow in the footsteps of what you see around you, youngin, you going to prison. But again, but again, that's why I was important. We do what we see. We all do. I don't care if you're black, brown, Asian, whatever you are, you do what you see. We naturally cooperative as people, believe it or not. And so we got to get it. We got to model. We got to give them something to watch and say, okay, this is what we do. This is how you're supposed to do it. This is what a man look like. That's so important. So if your homie not being a father, you hire your homie. Like you can't even be around me if you not in your kid's life. Talk about it. You know what I mean? You can't even be around me if you you not trying to help the community because that's what we gotta start standing on. And we be celebrating these dudes, you know what I mean? Because they in the street, they go to jail, all that shit. Like that's over. That's over. If you not a part of the solution, you a part of the problem. I mean, you know what I mean? And that's why I'm glad at. you saying it. Yeah, dog. We have to. We gotta start. And 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 that's why I'm so transparent. Like. And, and on social media, all that about my life and my family and my children, because I want youngers to see that, like this, is what it looked like. And I'm not perfect, you know. I'm I'm learning, but at the end of the day, what we got to do as black men, man, is 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 run our house, man. We gotta we gotta lead. And I got daughters. I just read a report come from the Associated Press came out today about you know they they look at young girls, black girls, man. It, it, the perception is that they're more. Uh, uh, aggressive, more Oh, yeah, sexual. I saw that study. No, come and listen to me, man. I got two girls, man. You got a daughter, bro. Yeah. Like, what you talking? Did they white counterpart? How is that? Who? But, you know, some of those people that they polled are black people. And that's, again, back to that's that disconnect. That's, well, that's, that, but that's she not fans. only that, but that's... Girl get raped. Well, she, she, that's what they say, right? She fans, so she out. You know, what you mean? You know what I'm saying? These are the things that, so whenever... So that's why it's, but that's what is based on perception. Yeah, it is. We can never and they're be telling victims, you that. Man. They're telling you that based on how we behave in our music videos, right? How we dance, right? Things that are a part of our culture are made to seem more promiscuous than someone else's culture. These are, these are cultural things to us, right? That are taken and made to make our young girls be sexualized. Yeah. I'm not saying we need to change anything. I'm just saying we need to be aware of the, of perception. the perception. Just like the perception is that you or I are a danger, a threat. That's Absolutely. why you can stand outside my car, point blank range, and shoot me like six, seven times, and then tell me don't move. Or you just straight shot. up on video yeah. with the Philando Castillo. That's what I'm talking about. No, the <laughs> man said, saying? "I look, I got a pistol on me, yeah. officer." You know, I'm just letting you know. Don't reach for your weapon. I'm not. I'm not. Clear as you, day. And then you panic and shoot him and then get off because you could say but, he was afraid. But what I'm saying is, but when you shoot me, this is, that's what I was discussing, right? When you shoot me, though, after you shoot me six times, you tell me don't move. Like, what am I? Am I a robot? How can I move? You just shot me. Six, but that's the perception that I'm a, I'm a beast or I'm bionic. I can... You, you fear for your life for no reason and that you, you can look at me after you basically kill me. I might be dying. I'm not dead yet. I'm dying. And tell me, don't move. Well, that's, and, that's and also too, to and also too, it is an expectation, um, back, based on ignorance and lack of understanding of us and what we've been through as Black and Brown and Native American and all of those people in this country, um, that somehow the the things that make us human, our feelings, the way we feel, the way we express ourselves through music, right? our fears, our, our fantasies, whatever, that somehow we shouldn't do those things to remove the human element, right? Like, people take hip-hop, yeah. and you take these young men, women, expressing themselves based on how they were programmed by the environment that they were in and sharing their through their music. Yeah. The expectation is, is that me as a gatekeeper, I'm not supposed to allow this artist, right, to share what they want to share. I'm supposed to dictate to them how they're supposed to feel and remove the human element about how they have fun, how they celebrate yeah. or whatever and tell them what they're supposed to talk about in their music. Or do you see the humanity from the beginning? But that's my point. Yeah. My point is always, well, they wouldn't talk about these things if we change the circumstances. Me not allowing them to tell their story or feel like there's an outlet for their creativity is not going to change the reality of what happened in their home, on their block, in their school. Sure. Not going to change sure. that. But we can also like it's like because of that, uh, because we don't identify or they don't see the humanity in us. And my book, I wanted to do that to restore the humanity, right? But like 
because of that, but they can have range. They can do Mike Posner can pop a pill in Ibiza and it'd be okay. It'll be a hit record. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Nobody is coming out and saying, oh my God. The but they have dude, that luxury. They have that luxury. I mean, that's the privilege. But that, and that's what about. I'm talking about. Yeah. They expect us to remove the human element yeah. of just being a human. Sure. And that's a very unrealistic concept. Yeah. Um, Tony Lewis is his name. The book that's out. Yeah, slug, a boy's life in the age of mass incarceration. And, and shout your social media yeah, so people Mr. could and Mr. And Tony Lewis Jr., man. And um also TonyLewisJr.com. Get that slug, man. Best book out, I promise you. There it is, man. It's always good to see you, sir. Thank, Thank you, you sir. very much.